Hi friends, with the discussion on the startup case studies, we have literally and uh, figuratively come to the end of our course. We have gone through the 12 week course on entrepreneurship with significant detail on various aspects of entrepreneurship and before we wrap up the course, I would like to make some final closing comments. So over the last 12 weeks, we have had 60 lectures and I had the privilege of sharing with you an extensive review of this course titled Entrepreneurship Perspectives of Business Strategy and Economic Development. And this title reflects the sweep and the depth of this uh, course that has been structured uh, especially for NPTEL and the enthusiastic participants such as you. During this course, we covered uh, four significant uh, components of entrepreneurship. We looked at multiple concepts and constructs. Those concepts and constructs could be aspects such as uh, design thinking, aspects such as uh, prototyping, testing and validation or it could be constructs related to technological innovation, marketing strategy we just covered in this week or how human resources of a startup uh, could be shaped and channeled for optimum benefit. So there have been multiple concepts and constructs that were covered. We also have had several uh, case examples. Apart from the 12 case studies which we considered explicitly, which brought out several models of having startups, we looked at under each topic several case examples which gave us insights into how startups are successful and in certain cases how startups face enormous hurdles too. We had interpretations arising from these kinds of concept constructs and case examples and many of these uh, interpretations have been equally insightful to shape our approaches to entrepreneurship. We also had futuristic prescriptions, how a company should look at technological evolution, how the governments and the entrepreneurs should, should look at uh, public policy and how we should look at technology as a bridge between uh, public policy and uh, private requirements of uh, wealth creation. How do we do those kinds of things? There was also an extensive discussion of the Indian context taking into account the global insights that are available in the field of entrepreneurship and uh, this combination of Indian context and uh, global insights characterize the course throughout. To put in a nutshell, this has been our journey over the last uh, 12 weeks. We started in week 1 with entrepreneurial journey and entrepreneurial discovery and we covered various phases of entrepreneurial journey every week and each week we had uh, different topics under a particular theme. So that, that way we had 15 themes which uh, ran over these uh, 12 weeks of uh, 60 lectures and at the end of it we wrapped up with uh, marketing strategy and case studies. We had multiple real life examples I said and we also had these 12 startup case studies which provided certain uh, uh, very good insights as to how even a student or a normal employee become an entrepreneur by himself or herself. To summarize in terms of the course objectives and what we did, I believe we have had a detailed overview of the multifaceted domain of entrepreneurship that was a primary objective. We demonstrated the importance of entrepreneurship as the foundation of industrial and business growth. We did not see entrepreneurship as just a business strategy construct or a wealth creation construct for the entrepreneur. We saw entrepreneurship as the foundation of industrial and business growth in an economy. We brought out several insights. Insights are important because uh, they help us uh, shape our individual uh, uh, approaches towards entrepreneurship or any activity because each individual case is different. We cannot predict how the environment would respond, how our own product development would take place. But the insights which are available by looking at various other uh, concepts, constructs and real case examples give us that wisdom and that instinct and that intuition to shape our own uh, uh, case development in a positive manner. Therefore, we bring in through this insightful approach a, multidis a multidisciplinary way of looking at entrepreneurship. And at the end of it, even in management and entrepreneurship, we, look, we require certain models, um, models of development. While in uh, physics and chemistry and other sciences, the models are very precise and there is an input-output relationship governing and in management and entrepreneurship, there are several other qualitative uh, factors at play. 
it is also important that we understand that if generally we do an entrepreneurial venture or a startup venture in this particular manner, we are likely to get this kind of results. And how we achieve that result and how we fine tune our strategy and activity set for that is left to us. But the insights help us to bring certain intuitive ability, instinctive capability and also a strategic approach to planning our entrepreneurial growth. So all these four aspects have been well covered in this course. I believe that if this course has been uh, gone through with uh, the same level of dedication with you all have participated, I would think that uh, you have had uh, the opportunity to gain an expansive and deep appreciation of entrepreneurship and its pivotal role in the Indian economy. We will be able to achieve entrepreneurship with clarity and focus and an understanding of the key success factors as well as the risks and mitigation strategies that could be deployed. As far as entrepreneurs who are already in the business of entrepreneurship, this course would have provided certain uh, additional insights as to how the entrepreneurship could be made more effective and more impactful. So this is a course that has been done with a great uh, belief in entrepreneurship as the foundation for India's next phase of industrial and economic growth. And in doing so, I have placed a lot of emphasis during this course on technological innovation. That is the fountainhead of entrepreneurship. Place a lot of importance on constructing a viable and feasible business strategy. And emphasized very much how entrepreneurship should, could be a strategy of national competitiveness for our country and how economic development could take place through entrepreneurship. So from startup to ramp up, how do we use these four factors and enable a scenario where as India aspires to be a 5 trillion dollar economy by let us say in a few years, how India could emerge as a global startup hub, a hub for global entrepreneurs to come into this country and develop a slew of ventures which are startups and entrepreneurial in their own right. While on this topic of uh, starting up a new venture based on technology and competitiveness with a perfectly viable and feasible exciting business model and also see how it contributes to industrial development, economic development. I would like to focus a little on uh, a startup which we have incubated in IIT Madras Research Park. I referred to this company in my case studies. I also referred earlier in one of the sessions how technological innovation is important. But as we wrap up this session, I thought that I should focus a little more on this venture because it is a perfect example how a startup can ramp up in terms of it various stages of designing, developing, prototyping and validation and also how a product could be globally competitive, globally relevant. This is the Muse wearable smartwatch I spoke about earlier too. This is an analog watch which has the capability of a digital watch. It is a smart wearable. It does not only measurement of normal features such as uh, steps, it also coaches the individual in terms of the health goals, wellness goals, the stress levels and various other factors. But more importantly, it retains the elegance and the appeal of an analog watch and provides the digital competencies in that watch. Again, this is an Indian startup from IIT Madras and Regional Engineering College Warangal students founded by them and also having a group of enthusiastic uh, student uh, graduates who joined this activity. It is also important to realize that such startups can function admirably in an industry which is dominated by giants, giants such as Rolex, Omega and uh, Nokia, we think. We have got uh, our own Indian giant titan in such an industry which is dominated by Swiss horology and also capability of decades of watch manufacturing. It is possible for a, an Indian startup to come up with a world class product which is technologically innovative and efficient. So this is the essence of what we have been discussing as the startup movement in India and startup movement in India for global needs. And this can be the role model which could lead to positively disruptive innovations technologically and positively disruptive developments in the marketplace. And this is the foundation of uh, industrial development and economic development which India could really benefit from 
and for that the ingenuity, the innovativeness of uh, Indian educational system and individual uh, student entrepreneurs would be of uh, great importance. And as people who are practicing working in the industry also join this mainstream of uh, emerging entrepreneurship revolution, I think uh, India would go great places in terms of innovation ranking and the benchmarks of uh, entrepreneurship globally. I would only sign off saying that entrepreneurship is vital for India's socio-economic development and India's emergence as global economic power. And in respect of the country, the principles that have been enunciated here are relevant and the entrepreneurial zeal which could come with an understanding of the concepts and constructs of entrepreneurship I am sure would go a long way in shaping not only economics and employment but also consumer satisfaction and the public good. So with these few remarks I thank you once again for participating in this course. I thank NPTEL organization for having enabled this course, having provided me the opportunity to deliver these series of lectures and the entire team of NPTEL at IIT Madras for having supported the formulation and video recording and uh, presentation of this uh, very important strategic course. Thank you one and all.